Thanks very much. Um, and um, thanks very much uh, to, for the comments for everybody else, which I, I agree with mostly. I was, I'm really um, struck by uh, the recent reports from Amnesty about the deteriorating situation in terms of human rights inside Iran. And I think that the, or, the resolution and the oral question have a balance in them. But I think uh, we have a broader question about how um, our external action and trade policy is being used to promote human rights um, in, in partner countries or potential partner countries. And particularly with Iran, this is a, a particular concern. If you think that uh, more people were killed, the only country, in fact, that more people were executed in um, last year uh, than Iran was in China, and including children, juveniles, being executed. There are significant problems. We have problems of trade union leaders being arrested and intimidated. We have problems of freedom of expression, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. Um, and I think there has to be a conditionality in our trade relations um, in relation to gross violations of human rights. Um, and therefore, um, I took that point number five in, in the draft text very seriously, that when we talk about a potential renewal of trade ties going hand in hand with substantial improvements in the respect for human rights, we are aiming at some kind of conditionality. One of my concerns is that in recent um, high-level delegations, uh, to, to Iran, it's been reported back that on some occasions human rights is pushed to one side in favour of other concerns. And I think we have to be having difficult conversations um, with our partners, particularly um, this one and in this case. So I just wanted uh, to make that clear, but I agree with what uh, Victor said as, as the representative of our group, but I think it's really important to stress. Madam Sinis.